Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. The severe weather par pounds parts of Texas this morning. A look at grape site, grapefruit sized hail that hit Waco and the condition of two kids after a lightning strike. And let's look out there with live cam. I know coming into work, it was still raining this morning and I definitely heard all the storms while I was getting ready. Good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is April 27th. Thanks for joining us. I hope you enjoyed a fiesta yesterday evening because now the storms are here. They are actually moving out, which yep. is good news. It was a very stormy night for a lot of folks, and Mike Ostrace joins us now with an update on those storms that are outbound. Yeah, first, you talked about that uh, Waco situation yesterday, because yeah. yesterday afternoon, I mean, all of a sudden we started texting the, the other meteorologists, and it was like, oh my gosh, Waco. Man, some of the radar images were amazing up there. But back to our weather. Yeah, rain is continuing to work its way out of here. We still have, obviously, wet roads, but uh, things, the timing couldn't be uh, any better with this. So let me uh, show you what What's going on on radar you, as you can see that all of the storms continue to work their way down to the southeast and you, a few of them continue on toward Quero. Still some uh, fairly decent downpours down to the southeast, but uh, things continue to improve and the timing right now. Mother Nature is really on our side as far as the timing with all of the big, big uh, Fiesta events coming in here. So uh, in behind that, we are at 64 degrees right now, 60 at Comfort, 59 at Bernie Stage, and the air will continue to draw. Now, this is not going to be bone dry air, but it's going to be a lot more comfortable than the uh, the past couple of days with the lower dew points that are moving on in with those winds that have now started to shift around out of the north to northwest. A little breezy this morning. Winds will kind of settle down somewhat later on today. Everything's on the low side. Of course, the updated count comes out later on this morning and uh, some leftover rain, a couple of thunderstorms off to the east, otherwise 62 degrees. We'll have some clouds around this morning, but things are going to clear out very nicely. Humidity is going to be tolerable. 82 right where we should be. Fantastic for Niosa tonight for the Big Band Festival. Now, as far as Battle of Flowers tomorrow, timing is still good on that. We've got another round of potentially severe storms then tomorrow night. Probably a better chance than even what we had overnight round here. Now, what does that do as far as Saturday's events and Flambeau? Will it be out of here by then? All those details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. This was a scene late last night at the San Antonio airport. Hazmat crews were called in after reports of a powder substance was found in the rental car area. San Antonio firefighters tell us that one person was taken to the hospital as a precaution. At this time, there are no reports of any serious injuries. People who live in the Hill Country town of Comfort will now be able to get early flood warnings. It's all thanks to Betty Murphy and her project to document the flood of 1978. That's her standing next to a newly installed USGS flood sensor monitor data collector that will track water levels on Lazy Creek. Murphy was relentless in raising funds and awareness about the fact there was still no warning system for the town of Comfort. You can read the full story on how she did it on KSAT.com. This morning, parts of the Midwest bracing for historic flooding, and last night, a storm dumped massive hail in parts of central Texas. Two children are in critical condition after a lightning strike in Fort Worth. As ABC's Rihanna and Alley reports, fortunately, they are expected to recover. Severe weather pummeling central Texas. Homes and cattle in the city of Dublin pelted by giant baseball-sized hail. This photo showing a four-inch grapefruit-sized hail hitting Waco. Meanwhile, in Florida, heavy rain and hail made travel treacherous, blanketing the grounds of this middle school in West Melbourne. Elsewhere, a more urgent threat is unfolding along the Mississippi River, potentially historic flooding, prompting evacuations, as many areas from Minnesota down to Iowa and Illinois brace for river levels they haven't seen in more than 20 years due to rapid melting of snow in the north. In La Crosse, Wisconsin, homes and roads underwater. The river expected to crest there later today. In Guttenberg, Iowa, the river is expected to crest at 21 feet by tomorrow. And you can see how high the water is. This is Lock and Dam 10. And downstream in Dubuque, the city now closing a crucial lock and dam system to keep the rising water out, taking that action for only the third time since the system was installed back in 1973. The impact significant for trade. In the spring, uh, you know, grain usually goes downstream, but in the spring, fertilizer comes upstream. A lot of that fertilizer is probably going to have to go onto uh, road and rail systems. 
and so that it can get onto the farmer's fields uh, as they plant. Rihanna Nally, ABC News, New York. Other news this morning, House Republicans have narrowly passed a sweeping debt ceiling package as they try to push President Biden into negotiations on federal spending. It's the start of efforts to avoid a government debt default this summer. Biden has threatened to veto the bill over the budget limits that are attached. The Republican plan would raise the debt ceiling by $1.5 trillion in exchange for steep spending restrictions that Democrats oppose. The White House insists the debt ceiling must be lifted with no strings attached to ensure America pays its bills. The FAA says it is convening an independent safety review team after a string of narrowly averted runway collisions at major airports. The group is set to meet next month with a goal of recommending safety and reliability improvements this fall. The team consists of former FAA officials and a previous head of the National Transportation Safety Board. It also has piloting and air traffic control experts, as well as a one-time astronaut. Last month, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg demanded the FAA improve safety. At that time, it was investigating six near collisions on or near runways this year. They involved commercial flights and several busy U.S. airports. In India, 10 policemen and a civilian were killed in an attack. It happened yesterday, according to a state's chief minister. The policeman and the driver died in an explosion when they were on their way back from an operation against militants. It's believed the militants were responsible for the attack, which was also condemned by India's prime minister, who sent his condolences to the families of the victims. 436, 63 degrees. The NFL draft is tonight on case at 12. Coming up next, how the Dallas Cowboys and Houston Texans plan to make most out of their round picks. I'm going to stay up late and watch a little bit of that tonight. Uh, let's check your traffic right now. Roads are wet in some spots, more so the further south you go because the storms uh, went north to south for the most part overnight. Looking at 37 and Jones Avenue, the roads don't look too bad right there, Steph. Not too bad right now, but yes, a noisy overnight. While I was getting ready here, and then a lot of drizzle for me on the way into work, but things are moving out, so that's good news for all the Fiesta activities happening today. We're gonna to get your very latest with Mike coming up. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Back just about 4.40 tonight, one young man will be a newest member of the Dallas Cowboys. The boys putting their final touches on the draft board as they get ready to select 26th overall in round one. Jerry Jones, Stephen Jones, and Coach McCarthy have done mock drafts as they try to prepare for every scenario they can think of. When it comes to the Texans, who have the second overall pick, and an NFL executive told ESPN no one knows what they're doing. <laughs> Feels like anything is possible with them. If they select a defender first and not a quarterback, that could throw the top 10 out of whack. It does appear the Texans are ready to draft a defender. They could also possibly trade out of that second spot. 2023 NFL Draft starts tonight with the first round at 7 o'clock. Rounds 2 and 3 will take place tomorrow night at 6, all live right here on KSAT 12. When the Texas League, San Antonio Missions hosting Northwest Arkansas Naturals yesterday, Mission starting pitcher Jackson Wolf nearly untouchable. He went five innings strong, allowing four hits, one run, one walk with 10 strikeouts. He's the first Missions pitcher since Burt Smith in 2019 to strike out 10 batters in a game. Meanwhile, Missions catcher Michael De La Cruz had the big back going three for four with four runs batted in. Missions roll 10-2. Wolf gets the win to improve to two and two. He was more than ready for the early start. I wanted it to kind of be that spark today. You know, it's, it's, it is hard with that quick turnaround. And so I wanted to uh, try and be that, uh, that, that leader and uh, try, and be, uh, try and be contagious. And I think um, my energy, it, it rubbed off on a lot of other guys today. And everyone just kind of went out and had fun. So the Missions, who struggled mightily in their first series this season with Frisco, is now 8-8. Eight eight. They'll host the Naturals again tonight at 7.05. Reds hosting the Rangers yesterday. Since he started, Graham Ashcraft pitching for the first time since his grandmother passed away. Top two, no score. Bases loaded, Ashcraft in a jam. Josh Smith grounds out the inning. And Ashcraft is all kinds of pumped up. Bottom nine, tied at three. Nick Senzel sends the game with one swing, ends the game rather, with one swing of the bat. Two run shot. Reds win at five to three to sweep the three game series. Astros at the Rays last night, bottom of the first, runners on the corners when Alex Bregman chops one to Rays shortstop Wander Franco, and he can't come up with the ball cleanly, and that's an error. 
Jeremy Pena scores from third, your only run of the game. Astros Mauricio Dubon school, school, singled rather in the top of the fifth to extend his hitting streak to 20 straight games. Astros win one nothing, taking two of the three from the Rays. And the biggest sports news of the night last night, a shocking early first round exit for the Milwaukee Bucks, eliminated by the Miami Heat in the oh, NBA well, playoffs. Yeah, we were actually watching uh, the Lakers and the Grizzlies yesterday for quite some time. So gotcha. it's getting interesting now. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> time now, 442 and 63 degrees for now. Four dramatic bird strikes across Texas, all within 24 hours. Coming up next, we'll look at the incidents that forced planes packed with passengers to turn around. And welcome back. It's 445. There have been reports of four bird strikes involving passenger jets within a 24 hour period here in Texas. ABC's Gia Benitez has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, bird strike threat. We are declaring the emergency for the bird strike. Uh, we've got uh, 168 uh, souls on board. Four dramatic bird strikes over Texas, all within 24 hours, forcing planes packed with passengers to turn around. Listen as pilots on a United flight from Houston to Santiago, Chile, describe it right after takeoff. We heard a very loud strike to the front right of the aircraft. All three pilots uh, felt uh, the subsequent strike. The plane starting that nine hour flight, but turning back around. The FAA says there were 17,000 bird strikes last year and 2,300 so far this year. Birds and airplanes are going to continue to have to share the sky, and there will continue to be bird strikes. They generally do not bring airplanes down, but they continue to do damage. So what's being done to keep passengers safe? It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. Let's look out there with Transguide. Couldn't see any rain in this shot at I-37 I at Jones Avenue, but the roads are still wet out there, so... Use caution while driving. Oh, man, I kept hearing the rumbling mm -hmm. all night. I kept waiting for the heavens to open up, and either I drifted back off into a deep sleet or it skipped out skip my house completely. Well, it was coming down pretty good there for a while yes. uh, when I was coming into work earlier this morning and a good moderate, almost a, a heavy shower. Mm -hmm. Timing, though, couldn't be uh, be better as far as some of these uh, showers. So everything is pretty much out of here for our morning commute here in town. Now, we do still have some of these uh, showers and storms down to the southeast that you can see on radar as of right now. And we're still uh, packing a, a decent punch here from, well, Quero. You're getting some good rain. These are coming down at the rate of about uh, f anywhere from, say, four to six inches per hour. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to be getting that much rain because it is moving along fairly quickly. But this is a good old, as you call it, you know, gully washer, whatever you, however you want to describe it. And we also still have a few uh, lightning strikes in here. So, yeah, you may be awakened by some of this. And this extends down to the uh, southwest. Kennedy, Carn City had some of these showers moving on through. But again, this will all work its way down to the southeast. And as you can see, back off to the west, things have definitely settle down back there and we do have not necessarily colder air, but slightly cooler temperatures coming on in. We're still just a bit above normal, but not that much. 60 right now at both Comfort and Kerrville. The humidity is also dropping down. Dew points have dropped, uh, say, five, six degrees or so on these north to northwesterly winds as of right now. So anywhere from five to 10 degrees around the area, lower than what they were even at this time yesterday. Now, this is not going to be just bone dry air coming on in here, but it is going to be pleasant. So we'll still have clouds around. Still some of these showers down to the southeast this morning. That's what that is taking into account. We dropped down to 62 degrees and then we're going to clear out quite nicely. A little breezier this morning and then plenty of sunshine throughout the day. Low 70s at noon and high temperature today up to 82 degrees and the humidity, which stays on the low side and continues to drop down, then comes back in here fairly quickly. So tomorrow morning, Still not bad. You may notice a bit of it, but very quickly humidity comes back in. So for the Battle of Flowers Parade, it's going to be nice, but it's going to start to get muggy as the uh, the parade rolls on throughout the late morning hours and then plenty of uh, 
humidity by the afternoon. Now we've got another front moving on through here and that's going to cause some trouble. So here's computer model. We continue to clear out throughout the day. Plenty of sunshine. Band festival tonight will be spectacular out there and tomorrow we start off maybe a couple of clouds hanging around here in the morning and we'll st still see plenty of sunshine. So like I said, it's going to be a nice battle of flowers. Make sure you take your sunscreen. Then watch what happens very quickly. The next front moves through here by late afternoon and dinner time. We start to see this line of showers and thunderstorms storms develop here. That's going to continue on in through the nighttime hours tomorrow, but right now it's looking like after a couple of leftover morning showers on Saturday, things are going to be moving out of here fairly quickly and we're going to salvage most all of Saturday after a couple of morning showers. So I think it looks great for most all of uh, King William Fair and Flambeau is going to be spectacular. However, tomorrow night we still have to deal with the threat for some severe weather with high winds and hail being the the biggest threat. So that's definitely and the atmosphere is going to be even more volatile tomorrow night than what it was last night and in the overnight hours. So we're really going to have to watch out for things tomorrow night. 76 degrees today at noon. Plenty of sunshine. Great looking day. High temperature today up to 82 with plenty of sunshine out there. And like I said, it's going to be spectacular for the band festival tonight. If you want to come out there, give us a wave. Fiona and I are going to be out there. And then tomorrow morning, if you want to head to the Battle of Flowers, Stephanie and her sidekick, Mark, are going to be out there. <laughs> Um, it's going to be nice for the parade, Good, but it is going to start to get kind of humid throughout the course of the morning. Okay. okay? So not, in, not, not too bad and then great throughout the day. And then tomorrow night, we really have to watch out for things. But then, like I said, most all of Saturday, except for a couple of leftover morning showers, good for, uh, you know, King William pooch parade could be a bit damp in the morning when Lee's out there, but then Flambeau looks wonderful as well. Well, good luck tonight. We know you'll power yeah, through, you. you'll have fun. coffee up or whatever you need to do. <laughs> Something like that. That gets rebroadcast then on Saturday. Saturday. Okay. Oh, Saturday very afternoon. good. Yeah, before uh, all the flambeau stuff goes well, on. Well, that's cool. So, like, the kiddos and the parents, maybe if they miss something on Thursday night, they can watch it on Saturday. Exactly. Very good. Thanks, Mike. 451, 63 degrees. Coming up next, an update on Dolly Parton's new rock album, why she says she will not do another one. Pick three numbers, 697, Fireball 7, Daily 4, 7911, Fireball 9. Cash 5, 17, 19, 30, 34, Lotto, Texas. One six nine twenty one forty nine fifty two, and your Powerball numbers two fifteen thirty thirty five forty nine Powerball six Power Play two. Good luck. Dolly Parton has a new rock album. Plus, Netflix announces new seasons of some of its more popular shows. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Allison didn't come home last night. A teenager's untimely death while on vacation with her family in the Caribbean sets the stage for the new Hulu show, St. X, which stars Betsy Brandt and Michael Park as the teen girl's parents. And they tell us after doing the show, it hasn't helped in giving their own teens more freedom. To tell you the truth, it's scarier now every oh, time yes. she goes out. Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh, by freaky. a football field. It's freaky, freaky, freaky. I mean, you don't know what could happen out there. But... At Target. The first three episodes of St. X are on Hulu now, with new ones dropping weekly. How is Dolly Parton's rock album coming? Apparently the project really got her creative juices flowing because she says they recorded 30 songs for it. I've never done a rock album. For sure I'll never do another one. But I got enough stuff on there that it'll last for a lifetime and, and, and another one. The album will be called Rockstar, and it's due out later this year. She also has a new children's book called Billy the Kid Makes It Big, out now. New seasons of two popular shows coming in June. Netflix announced its first new season of Black Mirror in four years. And HBO says June will be the month for a season two of its Sex and the City spinoff, and just like that. And if you're hearing flute solos today, they're probably in honor of Lizzo, the music superstar turning 35. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athens and ABC News, Los Angeles. It's now 456, 63 degrees. Federal prosecutors say a U.S. Air National Guardsman accused of leaking classified military documents tried to destroy evidence of his crime. Up next, what the Justice Department is saying about the leak that exposed more than 700,000 documents, videos, and diplomatic cables. And we will show you the new video cam, uh, body cam rather, video from San Antonio police in two separate shootings. Good news if you're looking to get your hands on a KSET Fiesta medal. So still to come on GMSA, we're going to reveal the HEB location where you can get one this morning. So keep it right here. We're going to share the location a little later in our newscast.
And checking the roads with Transcat. If you're just now waking up, some of the roads are still wet due to overnight storms. And I see a big rig stop there, but I don't know if that's just normal traffic flow or something's going on. But Steven's in the studio right now, and we will check in with him coming up at the top of the hour. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. This morning, we're learning more about the man charged with leaking classified documents. I'm Lindsay Watts in Washington. Coming up, why prosecutors say he's a flight risk and want to keep him locked up before trial. Let's look out there with live cam a lot calmer than it was overnight. We're at 63 degrees and a little cooler after the storms. And good morning to you. It's Thursday, April 27th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you've had a good week so far. It's been an interesting Fiesta week, but overall it's kind of working out. Uh, so far we've essentially lucked out except for one big incident. We've right. lucked out weather-wise yeah. with the bigger Fiesta events. And Mike is here with more on how things are shaping up for our Thursday. And the luck, Lady Luck with Mother Nature and everything else is going to continue on. Yeah, uh, Fiesta Fiesta a week ago got rained out. We had that one shower that moved through Niosa on Tuesday night. There was one on the north side of town uh, yesterday evening, and it just barely missed Niosa. Tonight is going to be fantastic for that, for the band festival and for the morning commute. Now, we do still have some wet roads, but the rain has moved on out of the metropolitan area. 64 degrees right now. Dew point stands at 60, so we're right on that threshold. That's been dropping down a little bit, so you yeah, still notice it, but that will continue to drop down. Not bone dry air, but enough to make it pleasant this afternoon. That gives us 87% humidity, and the wind has shifted around out of the north. We're going to make it up to 82 later on this afternoon. And the aquifer, which has continued to go up another two tenths of a foot, so that is some fantastic news with uh, some of this rain that we have been getting, and hopefully it continues to go up with some of the rain that fell in the recharge zone overnight. Yesterday's allergen count, a whole bunch out there, but everything is definitely on the low side. And of course, the updated count is going to be coming out in a couple of hours. So here's what it looks like on radar as of right now. And things uh, actually sped up overnight as far as the movement of this front moving on through here. And that's why the winds have now started to shift around. We've got some drier air moving on in and the showers and thunderstorms, which still packing a decent punch down here to the uh, southeast right around Quero. You're getting hit pretty good. Some good downpours. I was just checking earlier, no hail associated with this, but uh, again, that one little almost purplish core right there, uh, that's coming down at the rate of about five to six inches per hour. Doesn't mean you'll get that much rain because these things are moving along. If it sat there, yes, you would. And then this extends down to the southwest around Yorktown just past Kennedy, and this will all continue to work its way down to the uh, southeast throughout the course of the next couple of hours and move on out of our area. So some good rain. Yeah, a lot of lightning strikes. A lot of folks were awakened by all the thunder and lightning that moved through here earlier this morning. So you're hearing a lot of rumbles down here to the uh, southeast, but then back off to the northwest. That's it for right now. Everything's going to be clearing out. We've got a fantastic day in store today. We're at 64 right now. A pair of 60s up there in parts of the Hill Country, 59 Bernie stage, and these numbers continue to drop off the dew points. They're not going to be, like I said, bone dry today, but it'll be dry enough to where it's going to be a very pleasant day and a very pleasant evening with these winds coming in here out of the north. So uh, sunny today, low 80s, just fantastic. And it's going to be beautiful tonight, clear, pleasant, Niosa Band Festival tomorrow. Now we're going to start off in the upper 50s. That'll be the low temperature right around the time Battle of Flowers gets going, looking at low 60s, and we'll have a couple of morning clouds hanging around here. Now the humidity is going to come back in here fairly quickly throughout the course of the morning, so it is going to be somewhat of a muggy morning. Sunshine throughout most of the day, then the next front moves through here. We're going to have some storms developing by late afternoon in the hill country, and then dinner time and throughout the evening and fairly decent chance some of those may become strong to severe very volatile atmosphere tomorrow night that's going to be overnight after a leftover shower on Saturday, we've got another fantastic day on Saturday. Low 70s. Yeah, much cooler and then low 80s on Sunday. Beautiful flambeau weather as well. So once again, Mother Nature likes Fiesta.
Check out the roads right now. Traffic Authority. Good morning, Stephen. What's going on? Let's get a look at what's happening here at 35 at Ben Zingelman because I've been keeping a very close eye on this. Looks like a stalled big rig uh, that is taking place out there. Right now, it's not been determined whether this is in the south or northbound lanes. But watch out as you get the commute rolling because as you can see from this shot at Transguide, we already have a lot of folks out there this early. Uh, with the roads being damp, you definitely want to give yourself plenty of time to get the morning commute rolling. But thankfully, we're not seeing any issues right behind me here on our map. Just a lot of that active construction. but. Uh, we did have a few crashes that were reported in some of those uh, hotspot areas where we tend to see crashes. 281 northbound at Hildebrand that has already cleared out. Uh, also was monitoring a crash off 410 near FM 78. Uh, doesn't look like that's impacting the majority of commutes, so just be careful as things get rolling this morning. 37 northbound, if you are traveling in this early in the morning, should be about a 29 minute commute time, about 30 minutes along US 90 eastbound. If you're traveling in from Castroville and that arrival from Lytle should take you about 16 minutes. But we'll get some information confirmed from our friends over here at Transguide 35 at Ben Zingelman. I do not see a TxDOT Hero truck out there, but I do see some hazard lights on. Watch out. We'll find out more information and give you those updates coming up a little bit later on. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. New body camera video from the San Antonio Police Department in two separate shootings. A quick warning, though, the video is difficult to watch. Both shootings happened in March, just one day apart. In both cases, officers shot the suspect. So take a look. The first one happened on March 28th, and it started at a car wash on Essex and Hackberry and ended at the suspect's home on Mesquite near South Hackberry. So in the video, you can see the officer get out of his car at a house. That suspect, Paul Palafox, begins to fire at officers with an AR-15. Police were able to find Pal Palafox and with their drone, and later in the video, an officer shoots Palafox from across the street. Now the suspect was taken to a nearby hospital where he later died. The day after that shooting, there was another shooting on the south side at Arnold Park on Gillette Boulevard. This video shows officers telling the suspect, who is 26-year-old Raul Arzola, to put down a gun in his hand. And police say that Arzola pointed the gun at his head, then turned it toward the officers. And that's when the two officers say they shot Arzola. He tried running away, but police arrested him. Arzola survived his injuries and now he is charged with two counts of aggravated assault on a public servant and three counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. The Texas Senate has passed a bill that would ban non-U.S. citizens from certain descents from buying farmland in the Lone Star State. However, some are calling it a violation of federal rights. Senate Bill 147 would ban Chinese, Russians, Koreans and Iranians who are not American citizens from being able to buy farmland, timberland and fossil fuel rights here in Texas. The author of the bill says it's to protect the national security of the United States. However, members of the San Antonio chapter of the Asian Real Estate Association of America say the bill is bad for business. So does that mean I have to ask somebody, let me see your passport before I show you land, before you can even look at land? I bring this bill before you as a liberty lover and someone that wants to protect our food security, our mineral security and the Senate Bill 147 will now go to the House for a vote next month. Opponents to the bill plan to rally in Austin. New details this morning about the Massachusetts National Guardsman accused of leaking classified documents. The Air Force has now suspended two commanders from the unit where Jack Tahira worked. Now, as ABC's Lindsay Watts reports, federal prosecutors say that he is a flight risk and must remain detained. This morning, disturbing revelations about the man accused of leaking top secret military documents online. These new photos show what federal investigators found inside Jack Tejera's room. The Justice Department says that includes rifles, AR and AK style weapons and a bazooka. Prosecutors say Tejera regularly made comments about violence and mass murder, using his government computer to research mass shootings. Photos also show a smashed tablet, laptop, and other devices found inside a dumpster. In a new filing, the DOJ says Tejera is a danger to the public and they want to keep him behind bars until trial. Fallout from the leak is ongoing. ABC News has learned the Air Force suspended two commanders in the military unit where Tejera worked. The Air Force calls the suspensions temporary as the investigation continues. 
21-year-old Tejera worked as a computer technician with the Massachusetts Air National Guard. Investigators say he started posting classified material to the online forum Discord late last year. He's facing 25 years in prison. The system failed. This is a major failure. Some people need to be fired over this. Tejera had high-level, top-secret clearance, which the Pentagon has said was needed to do his job. But lawmakers from both sides of the aisle are demanding more answers. We need to know the facts. We need to know uh, who this airman was, why he felt he had the authority or ability to show off confidential documents, secret documents to his friends. Tajera has a detention hearing in Massachusetts later today. Prosecutors expected to argue that he may still have access to classified documents and nations hostile to the U.S. could help him escape if he's freed before trial. Lindsay Watts, ABC News, Washington. 509, 63 degrees. Just ahead, a look at TikTok's new option to create AI-generated avatars for profile pictures. Garden Fest has officially kicked off. Up next, some of the sights and sounds of the first night. Let's look out there with a live cam. A noisy overnight, overnight looking a lot cooler right now. We're at 63 degrees, and we're going to be checking in with Mike to see what we can expect for today's fan festival. We'll be right back. The Fiesta festivities continue, and Garden Fest has officially kicked off. First night wrapped up uh, at midnight. So this is the event where you can enjoy German culture and delicacies. It's located at Beethoven Manicor in the King William area. Our John Paul Brahas takes us inside the German Fiesta fun. Garden Fest 2023 is off to an amazing start and has all the fiesta fun but mixed with great German delicacies. It's pretty awesome. I love it. The beer cheese with the pretzel, the beer cheese is awesome. Potato pancakes, which are yummy with applesauce, and the broths are delicious. The buns are like perfect brat buns. And when you have a large selection of awesome food, you need something to wash it down with. We love the beer. Absolutely. <laughs> Garden Fest has all your domestic favorites, but it also has 15 different German beers all on tap for that crisp, tasty first sip. And to keep it at the perfect temperature, you need a beer stein. And this keeps the beer really cold. For Texas weather, this is ideal. But unlike most Fiesta events, the wardrobes you might see are slightly different like Lederhosen. You look amazing, but I think the one thing that really seals the deal on the outfit is my KSAT medal. Garden Fest is a fiesta party you don't want to miss. We'll definitely be back. I might be back Friday. Viva, Viva fiesta. fiesta! John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. All right, so we are told John <laughs> Paul did find some Lederhosen last night, but he says it was only news anchor Steve Spreester's size. So we'll see what happens yeah. tonight, right? <laughs> Our Fiesta coverage continues online. So see this QR code right now. Open your phone's camera feature, and that will take you to our Fiesta homepage. That's where you can find event schedules, parking information, and all the info on the parades. 515, 63 degrees. Coming up next, how Ring's new indoor security camera is adding another layer of security. Plus, we'll show you the device that is able to track your cat. debt was just such a challenge as a working single mom. I was working three jobs just to make ends meet. I knew I wasn't going to be able to get out of debt by myself. National Debt Relief I negotiated with my creditors and reduced my debt by half. National Debt Relief can significantly reduce the amount you owe. National Debt Relief got me out of debt. I feel like I'm in control again. I feel like I'm taking my life back now. Call or visit nationaldebtrelief.com to get started. With Allegra, allergies don't hold us back. Allegra starts working two times faster than Claritin. And unlike Zyrtec, it won't make us drowsy. So you can live your greatness. And Allegra Hives works from the inside to relieve itching and reduce hives for 24 hours. When the Murrays discovered Gain Scent Beats, they fell in love with the irresistible scent. <laughs> so did their dog, Roger. Gain Scent Beats keep even the stinkiest stuff smelling fresh. Welcome back, 518 on your Thursday morning. Everybody, everybody oh, all situated? Oh, just, oh all, I thought you were, were going to look at our Fiesta our colors. Our Fiesta colors so, yes, today. Nice. Yes. I'm not yes. as festive yes. as you guys over there. <gasps> oh, no. no tomorrow I will. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow. I will be. Yeah, yeah. I've got to save the color for the, for the <laughs> big... You even this out. There you go. 
picture of the, here we go. <laughs> of the Fiesta, of your Fiesta tie. Kind of Fiesta-ish. It's very yeah. 80s. I like it. It looks like a portrait. Yeah, of, it's very Or it could thrill. be a portrait. Yeah. It looks like um, a uh, geographical terrain map of <laughs> something that, that, that Stephen would, would use. Yes. Yeah, we Top could, topographic map. We could uh, definitely oh, no, do the I traffic see, on, I see that. on yeah. Mike's map. I see that as Speaking well. of. Yeah, uh, guys, unfortunately, don't have a great update here. So I spoke to our friends at Transguide earlier in the morning, and we were trying to find this crash that was reported off of 410. Uh, unfortunately, it looked like it was a, in a blind spot at the time, but our friends over there were working diligently to get us a view. And so earlier, we thought that this was actually a stall that was been reported, but I just uh, got off the phone with them again, and uh, this has been reported as that crash. It was reported near 410, uh, near FM 78 that I mentioned a little bit earlier. That is why we have a little bit of a buildup that is taking place out there. Not a good area, unfortunately, but we hope everyone's doing okay. I don't see any flash lights, but this is impacting the northbound lanes at 410, as you can see right behind me. Really, that's the only issue that I'm tracking here in the lab this morning. Everything else has been pretty quiet throughout the morning, but we're going to keep a close eye on this and hope for a better update and hope everyone is doing okay out there. But Mike, uh, unclear yet if some of those wet roads may have played a factor, but I'm sure it didn't help. Yeah, and roads are going to be fairly wet over the next uh, couple of hours. We had a few decent downpours that moved on through here, so the usual spots where there may be a little ponding, you know, you think about that one curve over there on uh, 10 eastbound over where near uh, days of all I believe and it on that left hand lane always kind of holds some water right there so eh, a little bit of runoff as well uh, as you can see just cloudy skies right now still damp roads over there at 410 by the airport and the rain continues to work its way off to the east at a really nice clip we still have some pretty good thunderstorms out here continuing Quero you've been getting a lot of decent rain these are showers and thunderstorms are dumping rain at the rate of anywhere from four to six inches per hour. You don't get that much, but that's that's coming down very good. This will continue to work off to the east. Victoria, a lot of nice rain as well. And again, this extends down to the southwest and heading in toward Beeville. A little further up to the north and uh, Gonzales, you had some of that rain earlier this morning and this moving just about to end right there around LaGrange. Elsewhere, further off to the west, nothing out there and so that's what's in store for the rest of today so we had some beautiful rain now we're going to have a great afternoon we keep in account uh, the 10 20 30 percent chance for showers as they continue to work their way off to the east and then obviously rain chances do taper off we're going to have a lot more sunshine things are going to be clearing out fairly quickly today we will make it in the mid to upper 60s late morning 72 degrees at noon a little breezier at times this morning and then just a nice uh, north to uh, northeasterly wind later on today and lots of sunshine very pleasant temperatures very pleasant humidity humidity will continue to drop down so we'll be getting down really nice late this afternoon and perfect for the band festival tonight. But notice how it kind of comes back in here very quickly by tomorrow and even by tomorrow morning, right as the, everybody's getting ready for the parade to start, we're going to have more humidity and that will continue to increase throughout the late morning hours and in through early afternoon. Now notice how there's another big front off there to the northwest of us. Prior to that, humidity continues to pump back on in here, making the atmosphere very unstable and very volatile. So here's the computer model. We clear on out today. Beautiful, beautiful day. Gorgeous night tonight. We'll start off a couple of clouds around tomorrow morning. Good looking day for the parade. Make sure you have plenty of sunscreen and some light clothing just because that humidity will come back on in here. And most of the day it's looking very nice. But then these thunderstorms develop late in the afternoon and into tomorrow night and some of those are going to be on the strong side and we do have a on a scale of one to five and two as far as the uh, threat for severe weather that's going to be late tomorrow afternoon in the hill country tomorrow evening and overnight now the good news is that's moving along fairly quickly as well so even after a couple of leftover showers, and that's not necessarily written in stone early Saturday morning, we're going to clear on out, get rid of the humidity. Beautiful for the rest of Saturday as well as Flambeau Saturday night. 76 degrees today at noon. Sunny skies. Good looking day today and a high temperature today up to 82. Niosa tonight. Fantastic weather. Band festival. Fantastic. Tomorrow, like I said, it's going to start to get humid throughout the morning hours. So lots of water. 
dress with some light clothes there and we'll have sunshine a good chunk of the day. Then that front starts to move in and that's going to really fire things up a very volatile atmosphere. I guess the best way to describe it tomorrow late afternoon tomorrow night. So we're going to definitely have to be on the lookout for some of those potentially severe storms. We clear out nicely Saturday. So yeah, King William uh, pooch parade may be damp in the morning, but yeah, the flambeau then a lot of folks looking forward to that great weather for that. Good news for Saturday. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Michael. Overall, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 524, 63 degrees. And let's look at your winning lotto numbers. Pick three, six, nine, seven, fireball seven, daily four, seven, nine, one, one, fireball nine. Cash five numbers, one, seven, 19, 30, 34. Lotto, Texas, one, six, nine, 21, 49, 52. And Powerball 2, 15, 30, 35, 49, Powerball 6, Power Play 2. Good luck. In today's Tech Bites, TikTok is reportedly trying out a feature that will create AI-generated avatars for profile pictures. The feature will use pictures uploaded by each user to create the avatar. The tool is still in its early stages of testing, and it is not widely available to TikTok users. Next, Ring's new indoor security camera has a low-tech innovation. It comes with all the same features as its predecessor, but users can now manually close a cover to disable all video and audio recordings. Previously, you had to turn the systems off through an app or by unplugging them. And AirTag rival Tile has launched a new tracking device for your cats. It costs $40 and is simply called Tile for Cats. It's a modified version of Tile that comes with a collar attachment. The device's battery lasts three years. Tile says it has a range of 250 feet. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. Now, if I owned a cat, He'd find a way to get it on me. Right. Uh, Here like, you go, owner. Shoes on the other foot now, Mark. 528, 63 degrees. As President Biden highlights job creation, others in Washington are still concerned about the looming debt ceiling. Up next, why some top economists are worried about why lawmakers cannot agree on how to raise the limit. Sales, as you might know by now, are down for Bud Light. Up next, how Anheuser-Busch is reacting to the news following post by a transgender influencer. President Biden is touting job creation as he begins his re-election bid, and some are not convinced. Created 12 million new jobs. We've created 800,000 manufacturing jobs. We have economic growth moving. And the dysfunction that we're observing in Washington is very disconcerting. Up next, why negotiations about the looming debt limit crisis still remain in limbo. The new bivalent booster vaccine is free and available in Bear County, but why aren't people signing up to get it? Good morning, my name is Alyssa Cole, and coming up, we speak to the top docs in San Antonio, and they have a message for the community. And let's look out there with a live cam. So the rain has stopped, but as you can see, our Alyssa Cole is wearing a jacket. Very appropriate for this morning, a little cool, 63 degrees. And good morning to you. It is Thursday, April 27th. And you see this is going which way? It's this going way. off to the east yeah. and southeast. This way. Yes. So uh, timing of all this is working out really, really nice. You know, band, or excuse me, um, Fiesta Fiesta a week ago got rained out. Mm -hmm. We had a couple of showers hanging around here Tuesday night at Nyosa. But yeah, everything with timing wise for Fiesta events is fantastic. And even just for the morning drive this morning. Now we do have some leftover wet roads, of course, and a lot of rain well down to the uh, southeast. Temperature right now stands at 64, dew point at 60. So we're just on that threshold where you sort of notice the humidity, but it is lower than what it was the past a couple of days. Wind out of the north now at 10 miles per hour. So again, here's what it looks like on radar. We have these showers and still some uh, pretty good thunderstorms. But again, they continue to work their way pretty quickly out of the area. And that's what happened overnight. We had the storms developing and then they sort of uh, got some legs on them and started to move on through here. So yeah, it was pretty rough earlier this morning and very loud with those thunderstorms that moved through here in town. But uh, things are improving very nicely as we speak. Still got a real uh, decent downpour right there just to the north of Victoria. That's continuing to slide off to the east. But as you can see, things are tapering off and right around Cuero, the rain is now starting to uh, come to an 
an end. It's 59 Bernie Sage, 61 at Balverde, 62 Rio Medina, and again, dew points. Now we still have a little bit of humidity down here. You get above 60, you sort of feel it. Ron Randolph, Stinson, as well as Pleasanton, but elsewhere to the northwest, the drier air continues to move on in here with these winds coming in out of the north to northwest. Light amounts of everything across the board as far as the allergens are concerned, and the updated count comes out later on today. 72 at noon. Got obviously clouds hanging around here this morning. We're going to clear out rather quickly. Wind out of the northwest, uh, a little breezier this morning, and then it will be dropping down. 72 at noon, 82 high temperature today. Really, really nice. Great to kind of open up the windows today. Beautiful weather for uh, Niosa tonight, band festival, and timing for the next two big parades. It's working out real well, but we have some potentially strong to severe storms thrown on in there, kind of squeezing in between the two of them. We'll talk about that in just a couple of moments. Traffic Authority got some problems out there, don't you? Yeah, we do, Mike, and, and like you mentioned, we have some of those leftover uh, wet roads that we are dealing with this morning, but let's get a better update here at 35 at Ben Zingelman. Uh, earlier, we told you about a crash that looked like it involved a big rig, and it looks like things may have cleared out. I'm still seeing the crash active over on the Texas website, but I'm not seeing any issues in terms of uh, delays in the area. Earlier, we showed you a little bit of red, and that seems to still be the case, but we're seeing some minor improvements out there as the commute really does start to pick up a little bit more. But keep in mind, the roads are still a little wet out there. You want to give yourself plenty of time as you get the commute rolling. Giving you a wide look at the map, though, thankfully there have not been many other issues to report this early. Very quiet start as we get the Thursday commute rolling. And if you're going to be heading into San Antonio, again, the theme is take your time. Uh, right now, 10 westbound if you're traveling in from Seguin, should still be in the green 29 minutes to the downtown area. Along 87 northbound from Lavernia, it should be about a 33 minute commute and 28 minutes for our friends down in Floresville. But let's get it back here again. A better update at 35 at Ben Zingelman. I'll continue to watch the roads closely and we'll take a look around town and find out also what you can find out what you can expect as the commute does get moving here, guys. Natalie, breaking news. San Antonio police are at a home on the west side where a two year old boy was shot this morning. They say his family told them it happened when the gun went off accidentally. Trina Weber is live outside the home on a street called Kent's store, and that is near South Ellison and Marbuck Road. And Katrina, we understand police found the child at a different location. Well, that's right. They found out about the shooting when the family showed up at the hospital with the child. Uh, but police say this is where it happened. This home here on Kent's store, again, off of South Ellison near Marbach. Uh, police are now, I believe, inside the house uh, searching it to get whatever evidence they can connected to this case. Now, they say that relatives showed up with that two year old boy at the hospital. He was shot in the head. Police say that one of the relatives told them that the gun was on top of a television and when the child reached for something, the gun fell to the floor, went off, and then he was struck in the head by a bullet. Uh, that child in critical condition right now. We understand there was a second child in the house, a three-year-old, who is now in the care of another family member. Police do have the parents, they say, downtown and are questioning them about what happened. And they say depending on what they find, it's possible that someone could be facing charges as a result of this child being shot accidentally by a gun apparently left on top of a television. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. New this morning, while new COVID cases are slowly decreasing in Bear County, top doctors in San Antonio say right now is still the best time to get the updated booster shot. GMSA's Alyssa Cole joins us live from the downtown area. Good morning, Alyssa. And we understand that doctors are pushing people to get boosted, but so far it's been slow. Very slow. Good morning, Mark. Stephanie, we got a chance to look at that data from the San Antonio COVID-19 dashboard and get this. Less than 16% of people countywide have the updated booster shot. That's the bivalent vaccine. Now, we know that bivalent vaccine, of course, it means two, and it means it's made with two virus strains, and it's been available since March here in our area. There are thousands of people countywide who are eligible to receive a shot but have yet to get one. The CDC recommends any person, even children six months and older, to get at least one updated booster shot if they already got the first two shots. That's back when we were getting our Pfizer and our Moderna shots. Now, of course, we got a chance to speak with Metro Health Deputy Director and University Health Ep Epidemiologist, and we asked them, are we still at risk of experiencing severe symptoms of COVID-19 if we don't get the updated bivalent boosters? 
If you don't get a bivalent booster shot, you are you're going to be at higher risk of getting infected and potentially having a more significant infection than someone that is vaccinated. You know, the Fiesta celebrations are underway, right? So please stay safe by making sure you're up to date with the vaccinations. Uh, we know crowded settings can raise your likelihood of being very close to someone who's infected with COVID-19. Now, the, now, of course, the reason we ask that is because the strains are constantly changing about if we could still experience those severe symptoms. And another thing to keep in mind, we also ask, aren't people signing up? Why aren't people signing up to get the shot? The deputy director says it's not exactly a straightforward answer, but she and other health professionals believe just the constant update, updating and recommendations from the CDC may be too frequent for the public. Now, if you're interested in getting one of the, the bivalent updated booster shots, Metro Health will host a pop-up vaccine clinic next Wednesday at the Frank Garrett Multi-Service Center on 1226 Northwest 18th Street. Those details will be posted later on our website at ksat.com. But for now, reporting live downtown San Antonio, Alyssa Cole, KSAT 12 News. The latest U.S. jobless claims report comes out later this morning. Many analysts predict the number of Americans out of work will rise for the fourth time in as many as weeks. And what they say shows a softening of the labor market. And as CNN's John Lawrence reports, this comes as the nation's debt ceiling drama remains in stalemate. President Joe Biden, two days after officially announcing his 2024 re-election bid, confident about the direction of the country. We've created 12 million new jobs. We've created 800,000 manufacturing jobs. We have economic growth moving. One thing that isn't moving? Negotiations about the looming debt limit crisis. The, the, the dysfunction that we're observing in Washington is very disconcerting. On Wednesday, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy passed the GOP's Limit, Save, Grow Act of 2023, despite four Republicans voting against it. We have lifted the debt ceiling, so nobody could worry about whether the debt ceiling is going to get lifted. We did it. The Democrats have not. The president wants to make sure the debt ceiling is going to be lifted. Sign this bill. But the White House's stance remains the same. House Republicans must raise the limit without conditions. Happy to meet with McCarthy, but not on whether or not the debt limit gets extended. That's not negotiable. The U.S. reached its spending cap in January, and officials say the federal government is expected to default by June. Many Americans are starting to figure out that the 40-year high inflation has something to do with the government racking up massive amounts of debt. I'm John Lawrence reporting. U.S. Justice Department has filed a complaint challenging a recently enacted Tennessee bill that bans gender-affirming care for minors. The Justice Department says the bill denies necessary medical care to youth based solely on who they are. Asked the judge to issue an immediate preliminary order to block the law from taking effect on July 1st. Governor Bill Lee responded that Tennessee is committed to protecting children from permanent, life-altering decisions. He says they'll work with the state's attorney general to push back in court and stand up for children. Donald Trump's attempt to prevent Mike Pence from testifying about their direct conversations after the 2020 election has failed. The D.C. Court of Appeals unanimously rejected the former president's motion. This means former Vice President Pence will likely be called soon to testify before a federal grand jury. Investigators are interested in attempts to pressure Pence to block Congress from certifying President Joe Biden's victory. They also want to hear about Trump's conversations with Pence in the days surrounding the Capitol insurrection. Pence has already said he would comply with the subpoena. 542, 63 degrees. Bud Light says sales are falling. Up next, we're going to show you the new report that shows how much they have fallen following two social media posts this month that feature a transgender influencer. And you love the chili of Wendy's. Up next, we'll tell you when it's coming to a grocery store near you. Let's look out there with live cam, I guess chilly weather for maybe just the morning hours. We're at 63 degrees, so a little cool out there. We're going to check in with Mike to see what we can expect for the rest of your day for the band festival tonight and then also tomorrow. We'll be right back.
In your morning consumer headlines, even though there's been a drop in Bud Light sales, distributors are largely sticking by Anheuser-Busch. The decline follows two Instagram posts this month that feature transgender influence influencer Dylan Mulvaney. Now, sales are down 17% according to analysis that Bump Williams Consulting gave the Wall Street Journal. Now, according to Beer Business Daily, the company is telling wholesalers the posts were not part of a formal campaign. As for draft pours at bars and restaurants, industry tracker Beer Board says Bud Light's rivals have begun eclipsing it. Great news if you like Wendy's Chili. Wendy's is going to sell cans of its well-known chili at grocery stores. The fast food chain is partnering with ConAgra on the project. Like the restaurant version, the recipe is beef, peppers and beans in a tomato-based sauce. The chili will sell for about $5 a can and should be on store shelves by summer. Wendy's Chili has been on the restaurant's menu since 1969. The idea for it came from uh, founder Dave Thomas as a creative solution for leftover hamburger meat. Oh, interesting. Yes. I was just thinking, well, I used to work at Wendy's. I remember serving. Really? Yeah, I, I, remember, That's cool. I remember serving chili, not out of a can, <laughs> so but in they, the yellow in the yellow little cup. Without yeah. giving away too much, do uh -huh. they just crumble up the hamburger patties that are left over to put it in the chili? Well, I never saw that part okay. of it. I was just, you know, doing the... <laughs> doing the serving. Okay. Thank you. And, I, and I guess I didn't ask. I was just like, eh. Okay. I'm not trying to give any ideas to case that investigates. I was just curious. 547 and it is 63 degrees. Let's look out there with Transguide looking at Loop 410 at McCullough where things are moving right now. Things look pretty good after a lot of rain last night, but we're going to check back with our Stephen Cavazos for the latest on the roadways. I like the chili. I did too. Sorry, we're talking about chicken on a stick over here. <laughs> but look, you know, it's good because not a lot is happening here in the traffic department. Thankfully, we could talk about chicken on a stick and all things Fiesta. But quick look around town. There you see 281 at the airport. Just take your time. Roads have been a little wet this morning following some rainfall. But you can see there at 281 at St. Mary's, it's not a bad shot as the commute really does get moving this morning. Wide look at the metropolitan area shows the same thing we've been showing you. Uh, pretty much a lot of green out there. We did have a little bit of a delay off of 410 near FM 78. That that was due to a crash, but that is cleared out. So hopefully everyone is doing okay. Quick reminder though, uh, 281 here on the north side of San Antonio, we still have that asphalt work that is taking place around 7 this morning. This is taking us up all the way till tomorrow, so keep in mind it should wrap around 1 in the afternoon. We will see alternating lane closures on the northbound frontage road right there at Porkfield Road. But back here on Transguy, things are looking fine. Tra uh, tech Stop's not reporting any major issues, so Check it on a stick. Yeah. Okay, here's what I'm thinking. Bear with me here. Here's yeah. my Fiesta food truck for breakfast, okay? <laughs> okay. It's chicken on a stick mm -hmm. with a biscuit mm -hmm. and a jalapeno honey dripped all over that the biscuit. That sounds delicious. Bravo. Oh, yeah, that's great. Let's, think, let's huh? make this happen. Right? <laughs> all right, so I quit, and I'm going to run a food truck. All right, awesome. we'll go support. Little, little, yes. I, and I, I'm picturing a little avocado throwing it on the side. So, okay, well, my question was, because we had too. Mr. Chicken on a Stick on SA Live oh, yesterday, yeah. the man who invented it 35 years ago. What would people rather have, Chicken on a Stick or like a KSAT medal? Oh, oh man. Do, we, a do we throw our point. station under the bus? Mm. <laughs> right now, I'm Chicken just, on a Stick. She's going to go with Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> chicken does sound good. We had that chicken on a stick yesterday, and that was darn good. So, all right, uh, things, and we are uh, kind of in a more lighthearted mood. The storms have moved on through here, and things are clearing out quite nicely. And it's uh, it makes you smile when you look at the forecast because the timing is going to be perfect for all of the big uh, Fiesta events coming in here. We still have some of these showers and thunderstorms. Notice how there aren't quite as many lightning strikes, and it was moving through Cuero. You got a decent amount of rain earlier this morning. Now this is all continuing to work its way down to the southeast and will continue to move on out of the area. So back off pretty much uh, with the exception right down here just to the east of Quera. Most all of the rain has moved out of our viewing area and back off to the uh, north and west. There is nothing going on there. We've got these winds coming in out of the northwest and still keeping into account the leftover showers over the next couple of hours down to the southeast. Temperatures will drop down to 62 degrees. Going to clear out quite nicely. Northerly wind of uh, 10, 15, 20 miles per hour this morning. A little breezier and then it's going to ease. Just a really nice day today. 72 high temperature, excuse me, noon temperature, and then 82 for a high temperature later on this afternoon. The humidity, which is continuing to drop down, it's going to be very pleasant this afternoon. Niosa, and you get your chicken on a stick, is going to be fantastic, as well as Band Festival tonight when all those 
thousands of kids are out there on the field and they put off and set off the fireworks as well. Now the humidity is going to come back in here fairly quickly tomorrow. We'll have a couple of clouds in the morning, so it will be somewhat of a muggy battle of flowers parade, but we are going to have a lot of sunshine and then plenty of sunshine throughout the afternoon hours. But here comes the next front that comes through here. Now, as far as humidity, that's going to be dropping down nicely for Saturday in the afternoon. Here's the computer model. We clear out rather well, and that'll be the case uh, through tomorrow morning. Couple of clouds, like I said, and most of the day tomorrow. But then watch what happens very quickly in the afternoon. That next front moves in here. Showers, thunderstorms develop along that late tomorrow night and decent chance that those are going to be severe scale of one to five a two as far as the threat for severe weather around much of the area and this is going to be again tomorrow about dinner time into tomorrow night and then a couple of leftover showers on Saturday and that is going to be it. So here's the water vapor imagery and you can see just up to the north. There's the center of circulation of that low that's pulling this latest front through here and then there's going to be another one on the heels of that. That's the one pulls the front through tomorrow night. 76 at noon today. Sunny skies. Good looking day today and then 82 high temperature today. Now the humidity low this afternoon and tonight, but it comes back in quickly tomorrow. So we'll start off OK for the parade, but it gets humid throughout the course of the parade. That next front moves through tomorrow night and a pretty decent chance for severe storms, strong to severe storms tomorrow night. Most of that's going to be getting on out of here and you can see as far as then the rest of the weekend, just fantastic weather. More after this. Good news if you're looking to get your hands on a case hat Fiesta medal still to come right here on GMSA. We'll reveal the HEB location where you can get one this morning, so keep it here. We'll share the location coming up a little bit later in the newscast. Also coming up, we're tracking traffic for you on a Thursday morning, and we're already seeing quite a bit of traffic at Interstate 37 and Jones Avenue. There's further down at I-37 and Hackberry. You're watching GMSA.